Hello everyone, I am Erika of BeatingSchool.com and you are watching No One Has to Beat Alone, my weekly open workshop to make sure that every beater all around the world has company. Please let me know if you can hear me, if you can see me. You can just type in a comment. So I know that it's working well. I don't see comments yet. Lita! Lita is here. Hi Lita, how are you today? Okay, Faye says that she can see me and hear me. Hi Faye, good morning. Did you have a coffee already? Ula is here, Sarah is here, Margaret, Mary is here, Kata is here, Elena, Malka. Oh, wonderful ladies. Thank you so much for joining today, joining me today. Sandra also, Orit, Lutka is here. Lutka, get well soon. Yosin, wonderful. So, ladies, are your beats prepared? Zuzi or Zuzi from the creative team prepared a very nice design for you for today it's called the joan and she made it as an earring however there are many different possibilities how you can finish this i already shared with you the ideas for the motif page but also you can find it in the tutorial of course so if you haven't done it already then please navigate to no one has to be alone.com and there you can download the tutorial, either the free version that's available for a limited time for three days or the support version for five euros. That's about five dollars. So while you are doing that, so you can then print it, save it to your computer and it just makes following the workshop easier so while you are doing that then i would like to show you the page that i mentioned this is how it looks like so this is the illustration from zuzi's joan motif and actually since we started to add this page then i have to say that it became a favorite in our team also, Zuzi and Veronica and me also love doing this because it feels like, yay, we made a jewel. <laughs> but it's actually super fast, as you could have uh, could see in some of the videos when I was sharing with you how I am drawing the tutorials for you. So this is also a super, super fun <laughs> kind of beading experience. So as you can see, you can make earrings, you can make a necklace, bracelet. Since the little flower, it has six petals, then the petals can be connected in different ways. As you can see that in the necklace, always one petal is connected to the bezel cabochon. Then in the bracelet, two petals are connected to each other, joined by, you can, you can put their fire polished bead or a pressed glass bead, it's up to you. So I'm really happy that we are having another cute and inspiring motif from Zuzi today. I, I I simply love how how I can see her ideas and designs coming alive and also to like witness her on her journey as a designer. And I think with this flower shaped com shaped mo shaped motifs, it's really like it's 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 a Zuzi style, I would say. <laughs> So I hope you are doing all right, ladies. And you have your beads ready. Are your beads ready? Let me know. In the meanwhile, I would like to greet also Maria and Debbie and Gunel and Liv and Marta and Sherry and Sharon and Joanna and Jeannie. 
Hello, everyone. So let's see what do you need for Zuzi's Joan earrings. Guna says that she's ready already. But let's make a final check. I also love doing it. I'm guilty sometimes of forgetting to prepare one of the one of the shapes. So, so let's let's do it together now. And so if we start with the bigger beads, the pressed glass beads, then we will need two shapes. We will need some super duos, six pieces for one, and we will need so-called round drop duos. Both are two hole beads, so make sure to check the holes before you are using them. And if you don't have the round drop duos, then you can actually try swapping those for uh, regular drop duos, gem duos. You will need to adjust the beat counts and you need to play with that yourself. But in case that you don't have those on hand, the round drop duos, then you can you can uh, make a very similar version with a different with a different shape. Of course, the effect will be different, and you will need to adjust the beat counts. But it should not stop you from from playing. It is possible. And besides the big beats, you will also need some seed beats, uh, and. From those, you will need two colors of 15s. I'm actually using in my own version three colors. Uh, it's up to you. And you will need also size 11. You don't need Miyuki Delicas now, unless you would like to add a bezeled chaton like Zuzi did here in her version. And of course, you can personalize the motif by adding drops, as you can see, a fire polished drop or a table cut drop or something from the glass in metal components, for example. I would like to show you my own version also. I beaded the first motif yesterday to make sure that I'm prepared for the workshop. So this is mine. And I used very similar colors than Zuzi's. Actually, nearly the same. Only the round drop duos are of a little bit different purple because I ran out of the originals. And then I decided to add a Preciosa rhinestone in the middle. It's a six millimeter one in the color rose opal. And you know I like I like long earrings. <laughs> so I made it into an ear stud. This is the ear stud from the Flowers in the Hair collection, the box. And I glued on a four millimeter Preciosa Naker Pearl in the middle. So there are possibilities to personalize even your metal components. And then at the bottom, I added a Preciosa crystal connector and then this piece of very long cup chain with a loop on top. So the loop and the crystal connector, they are connected to each other with a little jump ring and the jump ring I saved from one of my toggle clasps because usually the toggle clasps ca uh, come packaged together with a little jump ring. But as I am connecting the actual clasp to my bracelets or necklaces with beads, then sometimes I have some extra jump rings. And here I could make use of that extra jump ring. And just to show you how long it is. So this is how this is how it looks like. There is also a shorter version of the little cup chain available, by the way, for comparison. But yeah, I'm a megalomaniac when it comes to earrings. So in the meanwhile, Margaret says, I will put here, ah, 
this one so you can you can in the meanwhile see the two versions how i think zeus is more romantic and mine is i don't know hmm a bit more elegant maybe i don't know <laughs> but like you can see that same motif same colors but even then the finishing touches are what really can determine that where do you go with the style of your jewel. And in the meanwhile, Margaret says, no beads ready, just watching and beading later, as every novel has to bead a long time. Then thank you for your company, Margaret. It's so nice that you ladies join, even if you are working on something else or not beading or traveling, <laughs> like sometimes Brit Marie on the bus listening to the video from the from the car while driving thank you so much ladies Drovi is here and margaret asks the super duo in the box are they also called mini super duos they look so in the box there are the regular size super duos but yeah there are also mini super duos available but those are a bit even smaller so now we are working also from the box and now of course with this uh, flower because everything for the basic it comes from the box it is a regular super duo and Dev joined us and Marta says I do best watching you first and then making the motif that's a good strategy and Terry is here, and Donna is here, and Ariana is here, and Claire is here, and yeah, I think we are still struggling with the Facebook notifications a bit. I'm not sure that it popped up in the club. It popped up as far as you can see in on the page, but I'm not sure about the club. And Vania is here, and Joyce is here, and Irina is here too. And let's get started. So let's look at the bead mat. And let's look at the steps, what you need to do. I remove myself from the screen so you can focus better on what I am doing and on the illustration. Can you please let me know if you can still hear me? I switched my microphone. So I would love to know that you can still hear what I am talking about. <laughs> we'll take a sip of tea in the meanwhile. Okay, thank you so much, Faye. So let's get started. We'll put aside my pretty earring. Actually thinking of wearing it in the evening. And I'm super happy that I can complete the other half now. Thank you so much, ladies. I'm really happy that you can hear me. So we will start by picking up six pieces of round 11 seed beads and six pieces of super duos interchangeably. With super duos, I don't have to push my needle through the second hole to check it if it's open, because if I put them on my bead mat, then I can see through the holes. So that's something that I love about this type of this type of uh, two hole beads. Just a moment, adjusting where I am beading. so you can see what I am doing. Six. Oh, I accidentally have seven round 11s, so I have to remove them. I need six round 11s and six 
super duos. And now I will bead through all of the beads one more time to join them into a circle. I leave a little tail that I will weave in later. So beading through all of them and beading through the very first round 11 and the first hole of the super duo one more time. So this is how it looks like at the moment. A little circle and now I'm going to bead through the second the open hole of the super duo that I am exiting at the moment. So this is how it looks like. I will keep good tension by pulling the tail thread until it all gets like uh, well connected and then I can weave in the tail thread too. And Cynthia joined us. Welcome Cynthia, good to see you. So ladies, if you have the first step, then let's go to the second one. And this time we will be filling in round drop duos while beading through the hole on the thinner side. Be careful about that. We will beat through the other part, the thicker side later. And always two round 15s, one on each side of the round drop duo. So I am exiting now the second hole of the super duo and I pick up a round 15, a round drop duo, and another round 15. And I also carefully check to see if the second hole is open and then I bead through the open hole of the next super duo. So this is how it looks like at the moment. And I will repeat this all around the motif. Always round 15, drop duo, round 15. And in the meanwhile, checking the second hole of the, of the round drop duo. So ladies, while we are doing the repetitions, now the magic number is six. So six times adding the round drop duo, six round drop duos all together. Ladies, while we are doing this, let me know. What are your colors today? Are you working from the flowers in the hair box? Or do you have some other super duos or round drop duos? Let me know, I'm curious. Vania is asking, what kind of other bead would work than the round drop duo? Vanya, I would suggest, as I said at the beginning, to try gem duos, maybe the regular round drop, uh, the regular drop duos, but you need to keep on mind that you will need to adjust the bead counts around, around the beads maybe even the connections in between them. And that's something that you need to figure out on your own, because I have the bead counts uh, only for the round drop duos. So after, oh, the Vexalo is a good idea. Margaret, uh, love your creativity. <laughs> in the lots of different like two whole beads, work but you need to adjust need to make the adjustments so this is how the motif looks like at the moment and i finish by beading through the first group one more time that i have added 
and then I continue through a super duo and around 15. So I stop between around 15 and the round drop duo. And Joyce is waiting for her box and she finds this cute. Faye is also waiting. And Faye would like to work with pink, chartreuse, and white. I liked the white pop in one of your recent jewels, Faye. You know that I'm not a big fan of white, but I saw something from you where you had a little white pop in the earring, and I really liked that. And chartreuse always sounds great. Lita says, the Lila Vega Luster round drop duos and satin metallic lilac luster super duos. Oh, lilac purple mood on Lita's bead mat. Ula is asking about kite beads. I think any kind of, uh, that's also a great idea. I think any kind of uh, two hole beads would work actually with some adjustments, maybe like if they are thinner, then instead of a round 15 between the petals of the motif, there are like, in my case, silver round 15s between the petals, you can go for something bigger, like a three millimeter pearl, for example. Sandra is working with purple, matte silver, matte crystal, and matte purple iris. Some early eyes arriving on Sandra's bead mat. Gunnel is suggesting Samos. And Yosin says, I use zinc iris, super duos, and baby blue luster drop duos. The 15s? The 15 is banana yellow. Oh, that sounds great, Yosin. I was hesitating if I should use the baby blue luster drop duo. So I will be uh, really happy to see your version. Joyce is suggesting gem duos. Oh, Vanilla says she actually has drop duos, a lighter shade of purple. That's great. <laughs> And Gunnar says, my colors are magenta super duo, lilac and bronze. Oh, indeed, Joyce says that that sounds very pretty. And Ula is using lilac, fuchsia, fuchsia, <laughs> gold, and a tiny bit of turquoise. That all sounds very nice, ladies. I'm curious to see what we, you are going to make. And let's see how do we progress in step three. So in step three, we are already adding a bunch of seed beads. I'm exiting from around 15 with my thread hanging towards around the drop duo. And I pick up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces of my first color of the round 15s. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now that I have the ten round fifteens, I bead through the open hole of the round drop duo, but in the opposite direction. So the sequence, the group of round 15s, it's like nicely framing the uh, round drop duo already. And now I want to fix it better. So I skip the first four that I just picked up and I bead through three pieces of round 15s. Three should be left still. But before beading through them, I pick up around 15 in my accent color and then I bead through the, through the rest, through the remaining three. So the 10 pieces get divided in the following way. 
when you after you beat it through the second hole of the round drop duo you skip the first four you beat through three you pick up the accent color and then you finish by beating through three more and at the end of this step you pick up four more pieces of the round 15s and you bead through round 15 super duo and round 15 and then you are in position to do it over and over again as we said magic number today is six so you will do it six times all together and Yeah, six times all together, as Margareta says. And the seed beads, Margareta is asking about the seed beads. So the one, yeah, there is, uh, there is one accenting color in the middle. And I will do it now again, picking up 10 pieces of the turquoise seed beads. I'm at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then beading in the opposite direction through the open hole of the round drop duo, skipping the first four seed beads, beading through three, picking up the accent color, and then finishing the step by beading through the remaining three and adding four more. Ladies, how is it going? This is a little bit tricky, this step. I think Zuzi explained it in the illustration and the text wonderfully, but this can be a little bit tricky. So please let me know how is it going? How does it feel? I would like to make sure that everyone is on track and that I can answer questions if you have any questions. In the meanwhile, I'm picking up beads for my next petal. And Ginny says, going great. Love how it stays in place. And Yosin says, it goes well. Cynthia is watching before trying. Margaret. Uh, Margaret is also saying that she's watching now and then it will work. For fate also makes sense. Wonderful, ladies. Third petal. So, and do you already have plans for blinging it up, for adding extra components? For me, that's always like a very exciting part of the process when I'm like, okay, the beading is done and now I will make it special. And then I'm thinking about it always like, what is the motif kind of asking for? What kind of shapes or colors would I like to emphasize? And then I always, <clears throat> after I am done with the beading, I'm always taking a little bit of like play time, comparing colors <clears throat> and shapes of different drops components that I can add and I really enjoy that part. And Vanya is asking about special discounts and let's see what the future will bring. I'm not making any promises. I don't like to say in advance what kind of special deals we are going to have. Now we are having 
an amazing one that you if you place an order for 60 euros that's about 60 dollars the next wednesday i will send you a tutorial as a gift Susie's super special johnny pendant tutorial what you can see now on the on the image she bezeled table cut beads she bezeled preciosa chatons and connected them in a very nice pattern together with the parachute beads and some fire polished beads And Joyce says, very clever. I always wonder why you don't just add the accent bead on your first pass. Is that for security? Joyce, super good question. You can do it both ways. Uh, both ways would work. You can also add the accent bead on your first pass. And then when you uh, pass through that part for the second time, you skip the accent bead. So I think it depends like what is your personal style, what works better for you. Also at the specific, specific uh, motive what we are working on. Sometimes it does make a diff little difference, sometimes not. But I think in this case you could you could totally go for that other option if that feels co more comfortable for you. <laughs> Sandra says, thanks for giving us a heads up on the different bead types in advance of our boxes so that we could have beads to use with the new motifs. Oh, I like, uh, I'm, I'm really happy that you like that, Sandra, that you can already start thinking a little bit in advance. It was Karyana's uh, suggestion a few months back that we start doing that. So I really liked her idea. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Margareta. I will actually sip a bit of tea. I'm not sick, like everything is all right. It's just, I think I was talking a lot during this week. <laughs> so... Yeah, my uh, my throat feels a little bit overused. <laughs> Yesterday in the evening, I was actually participating in a super nice workshop. It was the second week of three workshops. It's a uh, uh, it's like a personal development workshop. It's going online. And I really enjoy working with the group. It's a little group of 12 people with two uh, psychologists that are guiding us. And we had a super fun exercise. Okay, fun, interesting, but also it was like, I think a bit uncomfortable at first too, because we got a list of uh, a list of uh, positive and negative character uh, traits, and we had to select five of the good ones and five of the negative ones, what we feel that are specific for us, and we also had to ask two friends to do the same, also with the positive and also with the negative character traits. And then it was very interesting to see that what is what you think about yourself and also others agree, and also to find out that there might be things that you did not notice and others get an impression about you. And of course, it might feel a little bit awkward talking about not so nice character traits. We all have positive and negative stuff, of course. But it is really a rewarding experience, especially if you choose people with whom you can like 
also have a nice deep talk afterwards. So I really enjoyed that. But indeed, that was like three hours of extra talking. <laughs> okay, of course, I was not talking that much because, because I was just a participant. But still, yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, Cynthia also has the trouble with her voice because of allergies. And for Joanna, the colors are a challenge at the moment. And she's still picking colors. And I'm finishing my last petal. I don't see any more comments. So I hope that you... You can still hear me. I'm picking up my last group of 10 seed beads. Beading through the drop duo, skipping four, beading through three, adding the accent, finishing by beading through three more, and adding four more seed beads at the end. And I finish this by beading through seed bead, super duo, and seed bead. And let's see before I pull my thread through. Yes, in step four, this is how it should look like. So I have all my six petals framed. And in the meanwhile, Elena says for this model, I want to use 12 millimeter Rivoli crystal with real light. Beach models for a bracelet or necklace. Can you please tell me how many Delica 11 beads are needed for the first row of bezels? For the 12 millimeter one, it's 32 pieces, Elena. It, the 12 millimeter one is the best Rivoli to bezel <laughs> because 32 can be divided to 16, 8, 4, 2, so you can make like a nice symmetrical piece. And Vania has a question. She says, My drop door is chalk white terracotta copper. I wonder if that is right as it looks lilac. Uh, I know which one you mean. And thank you for bringing that up, Vania. I was also wondering about the name of that, but according to the manufacturer, this is the correct name of the color. So, and now we will be adding more seed beads between the petals. To do that, I will first bead through the be seed beads around the petals that are framing the round drop duo. This time I'm also beading through the accent bead at the end of the petal. And I top before I would be through the last one added in the previous step. And there I pick up around 15. In my case, it will be a third color because I wanted to add a little bit of silver. And then I skip the first from the framing beads. And then I bead through one, two, three, four, five, six, the accent bead at the top of the petal. And then one, two, three, four, five, six seed beads. 
So between the connecting round 15s, you always bead through 13 seed beads. Six on one side of the accent bead, the accent bead itself, and then six on the other side. <clears throat> and Cynthia says, my ankle is starting to feel better since they gave me a new boot. I was actually able to make a cup of coffee for the first time in seven weeks. I love the idea of bezeling the 12 millimeter Rivoli. Looking forward to seeing your jewel, Elena. Cynthia, I'm really happy that, that you uh, feel better and that your ankle feels better. The coffee is nicely in alignment with International Coffee Day, which was yesterday. So that's very fitting. And I hope you have a full speedy recovery now. And Vania, uh, by the way, if you notice anything like this, Vania or anyone else, that you think that something is not 100% right, like Vanya said with the color, then please feel free. We really appreciate it. If you let us know, you can write to us at info at beadingschool.com and we will, we will look into it. And if there is something like that happening, then of course, like we will correct it. It's just this specific uh, situation that I know the answer right away because I was checking it earlier this week myself when looking at the round drop duo colors. And by the way, at info at beadingschool.com, uh, one of our one of our newest team members, Bea, is waiting for you. And I don't know if you have read the interview with her, but you can get to know Bea, who is helping you with all kinds of questions and orders and everything at the info email. So there is a face-to-face -face interview on the Beading School blog and you can get to know Bea better. And I wanted to thank you for all the kind comments that you left for her. She's really like, she's extremely hard for a king. She's 24 and so, so devoted to what she's doing and learning and trying to like always find the, always find the solution that I'm, I'm really amazed by her, by her dedication. And I'm grateful that, that we found each other with Bea Bear and Beating School, and now she is with us. <laughs> and faces in the meanwhile. Wow, how this little bit stabilizes the motive. Your extra silver adds a little pop. Indeed, a little pop, but there is that pop. And I love Zuzi's ideas and thread passes. It's really. Nice to, to beat her motives. I love them. Oh, Margaret was also not feeling entirely good. Wishing you also speedy recovery, Margaret. I hope it will feel a lot better soon. And Terry says, Box is supposed to finally come today. Happy dance coming, so watch out. Oh, Terry, Christmas is... <laughs> Christmas is very close. We always say like we want you to uh, want you to feel like it's Christmas when you when you receive a box, even if it is in July or in September. Now, so wishing you lots and lots of fun with your box. And Faye says, "Where well, is so sweet on the email and helpful and kind." <laughs> Joy says she was also in touch with Bea and she was very considerate and helpful. <laughs> I'm really happy that you that you loved being in touch with her. So and now let's see what's happening. <gasps> I'm ready. Wow, this was so fast. I'm like, 
it feels like I'm ready, but oh my god, <laughs> time was flying. So then let's use the little extra time. I would love to show you how I was adding the six millimeter rhinestone in the middle. So to do that, I'm beading back to the very first circle, the round 11s and the inside holes of the, of the super dual beads. I also want to make my little flower a bit sturdier and I will do that by repeating the thread path in that very first circle through the round 15th and the first holes of the super duos. Are you going to add something in the middle too, or will you leave it? Will you leave the circle empty? I think it looks good both ways, so it's really up to your personal preference. I'm curious that what's your style today for this? So I beat it through the circle. Margareta will add a bit of shine in the circle. <laughs> Mine will be this rose opal. Oh my god, I'm still like uh, at the beginning when I started to bead some 12, 13 years ago, then not many opal colors were available. And I was so very happy when, when I could finally start working with opal rhinestones and bicons and sometimes fire polished beads and cabochons even and cup chains even. It is a big love for me, the opal colors. Oh, Lita says, I'm going to try a two-ho cabochon. It should work okay, Lita. Maybe with the connection uh, with the size 15 to make it sit nicely. Please let us know that how did that work? I'm curious. Ginny is asking, what is the pink, uh, what is the color of pink Susie uses on the bezel? Hmm, let's see. I think it's the one with the, from the box. Okay. Okay, sorry, that was an accident showing my face. Not that it's bad, but there was echo, I guess. <laughs> so... So, yeah, it's out of the box. I think everything what is on Susie's Susie's variation is out of the box. And oh, Cynthia will add both. Margaret. Ulla will, will use a pearl. And Faye says, it is amazing how the rhinestone changes the look entirely. Indeed, like those, those little things. Oh, I love that about beading. And before I would do that, I just wanted to also show like, this is how you can connect the motifs into a bracelet. So you have an example how it would look like next to each other. I think that's also a nice possibility to to finish your jewel into the uh, into the into a into a your motive into a jewel <laughs> and actually also the ear hook is from the from the box but I'm but maybe it's only in the future version so and adding the rhinestone 
I'm exiting the inside hall of a super duo. I pick up the six millimeter rhinestone and then I bead through the one, uh, I'm exiting here and I'm starting to count one, two, the through the third super duo, but from the opposite direction, the following size 11 seed bead and also the next super duo. So in between crossing the two holes of the rhinestone, the two holes are in a cross shape, I bead through super duo, round 11, and another super duo. Now I bead through the other hole, the open hole of the rhinestone, and I bead towards the super duo that I was exiting before picking up the rhinestone through super duo and round 11, and then through that very first super duo. And to stabilize my rhinestone on top of the motif, I will repeat the thread path one more time. Ooh, faces daisy chain, indeed. <laughs> For face, spring is coming as we here on the Northern Hemisphere are heading into autumn. For Fay and some of our other beading friends in the club, spring, are co spring is coming and I'm a bit jealous of of that or like not jealous but I love springtime more than spring and summer more than than autumn and winter I'm doing my best to enjoy autumn and I learned to enjoy it in some way I'm getting even used to some of the autumn colors I like working with them in when I am in that mood but Spring is the most energizing time of the year for me. And Margaret says, if you take another rhinestone on the back, it could be wearing both sides. Oh, and that's so true. Totally possible to make it reversible. And you can even add like different colors. So there are super nice possibilities about this, about this little motif. And now that I attached the rhinestone, then I will be beading back to the edge of the motif and then I will fix the ear stud and the connector on my, on my motif to finish it off. So ladies, how are you doing with your drone motif? And do you have any questions about it? Or about anything else that comes to your mind? Still here? I can still answer your questions right away. Sipping tea. <laughs> you don't have any more questions now oh Claire has a question yay <laughs> Claire says how do you fasten off your thread when you finish the motif so both with my tail and with my working end I like to weave like after I added the last component the last bead that I wanted to add to my jovo then I uh, bead like maybe one more time all around if it's a peyote bezel or here I will repeat the thread pass around the seed beads I will repeat the thread pass with the tail and at least once or twice through the super duos and the size 11s 
if I have even a tiny, tiny feeling that the beats could get loose, that they are like not very strongly connected to each other, then I will tie some knots. I try to tra tra try to tie the knots <laughs> next to some big beads. So then afterwards I can pull the knot into the hole of the big beads. The bigger beads also tend to have bigger holes. So you can hide the knots in them. Uh, and then after the knot, I still continue for at least like two centimeters, three centimeters. So that's one inch, about one inch. And then I try to cut off the remaining thread as close to the beads as possible, either with a thread burner or with, or with like I'm pulling the thread and then with some sharp, small scissors. But I never... Uh, cut the thread right away after the knot or right away after adding some width. So thanks for the question, Claire. Jean is doing great. And Lita says that the seven millimeter two hole cabochon is working out fine. Then also I guess the six millimeter ones should be okay. Thank you so much for letting, uh, letting us know, Lita. And thank you, Cindy. And Terry and Thomas Cochet, so good to see you. Haven't seen you for a while. Oh, I'm glad that you like it. It's Zuzi's gorgeous motif. Hope you will be able to read it later. And Mary, Mary says, I had to use kites and was able to use your beat counts. That's wonderful. Oh, Mary. I'm, I'm, I'm really curious about your kite flower. And Susan says, I love how versatile the motifs are. <laughs> Indeed, there are so many possibilities and I love your puppy. I see your, I see your profile picture in big for the first time, I think. And I love the puppy. <laughs> And Ula says, a four millimeter pearl in the middle works uh, really well. Thank you, Ula. That's also great to know. For Yoshin, it was fun. Margaret says, this motif gives so many possibilities for jewels. And hi, Carol. <laughs> Carol enjoying the pretty motif. Thank you, Faye. Thank you, Malka. And Claire, I am actually thinking about uh, about a coffee time with Erica video. I actually have a big planning sheet and I think I scheduled it for four weeks from now. I'm not 100% sure now, but I would like to talk about basic tools that you need, need when you are beading, some basic tips connected to the tools. So ladies, Claire or anyone, if you have questions about the basic tool set that you need or basic tips, then please post them in the club, send it to us in an email, we will collect them. And then I would like to answer everything all at once. Yeah. And then, yeah, Adam is shouting hi from the background. He went for a run and he doesn't uh, realize that I'm still <laughs> still with you, ladies. <laughs> hi, Adam. <laughs> oh, Vanya has the kite beads. Wonderful. Margaret likes this. And Mary says the kites give the motive a snowflake look. Preparations for Christmas. So, Claire is saying hi to Adam, <laughs> Margaret too. By the way, he's also working hard in the background. So hopefully you didn't notice any hiccups with the website today, but the website was actually migrated today to a bigger and stronger server to get ready for Advent time, Christmas time, <laughs> to make sure that it can withstand the 
the Reading Square Advent Calendar attacks on the website. <laughs> so, thanks, Adam. <laughs> So, lovelies, thank you so much for the time today. Wishing you a very nice week me, uh, weekend. Wishing you lots of creative ideas. And make sure to post your jewels in the Beading School Club. I can't wait to see everything. Still, don't forget, until Tuesday, we have the Tuesday's coffee time. We'll, uh, we still have the special offer that if you have a 60 euro order in the bead shop, then you will receive Susie's tutorial as a gift from us. I will send it out on Wednesday. So thank you, ladies, and have a nice rest of the day and happy beading for the weekend. Bye-bye.